Mike Valick, the director of the new video game, Poultry Geist. Of, uh, po- hey. I, I don't even know, am I saying it right? The Poultry, poultry Geist oh, of video tra- game? Trauma, per- per- Trauma Presents Poultry Geist. Trauma Presents Poultry Geist. Thank you. So this is, uh, for those who don't know, Poultry Geist is a movie uh, written and directed by Lloyd Kaufman uh, from Trauma. And arguably one of the most disgusting movies I've ever seen, but in a great way. Yeah. Uh, so this is this is the game. Is it? Is it? I I think I remember hearing it was like a sequel of the game of the movie. Is that right? We're, we're calling it like a spiritual sequel. Okay. This kind of thing. So for me, the original movie, like, hinges on the idea of um in 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 action and action is like a big theme for me and obviously like the environment and like food and stuff like that so like if you don't know the original movie is about this guy he has all these dreams um he ends up working at basically a fast food restaurant gives up those dreams but his girlfriend becomes this you know political person who's doing all these protests but not really doing much in these protests just kind of wanting to live the life of protesting and then of course they have you know radio it devolves into radioactive giant chickens not radioactive excuse me <laughs> um uh haunted uh uh native american chicken native american haunted right. chickens yeah. uh, it's like a curse on the white people to all become these giant chickens um, it gets crazy it gets nuts <laughs> and so we um I decided that the story, I, I really wanted to do chickens. That was my focus, environment and chickens. And for me, like the newest thing with, with chickens in the environment is the other side of the spectrum, which is people who have these suburban chickens where mm. you, raise, you raise a chicken in your, in your, your house or your home in like a just normal setting and you own a chicken. It's miserable. It's horrible. But it's, I mean, it's understandable because there's such you know, horrible stuff. I have not asked if I can swear. I know it's a, a, a yeah, totally. Uh, I, I don't know. I'm sure I will. <laughs> um, it's fucking disgusting to have a chicken living in your in your house. I don't even think of that, man, because I kind of that's always been a thing of like I'd kind of like to have a chicken to have all the eggs, you know. But yes, maybe so, should I not do that? Well, well, your lifestyle does not need to change so drastically to get some benefit out of it. This is a right. reaction of us, of all the, I understand it. Like I'm making right. fun of both sides of this, but I totally understand it. I'm more empathetic towards the ridiculous in the environmental because it's just like, Oh, holy shit. Like no one's doing anything about these factory farms. This movie was made like more than 15 years ago, yeah. poultry guys. And, and it, it came on the heels of fast food nation of, um, supersize me all these things that were like fix the food thing and we really didn't organic cheese is now available in walmart mm-hmm. because possibly really the only change and so people are like well shit how do i fix it you know but it's misguided you know right. i mean the question is it's, it's ridiculous even you're, you're feeling it do i want to raise livestock so i can have one or two eggs a day right. i mean that equation is wild <laughs> so yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's, but it's understandable, right? It's a more understandable thing. And so the game revolves around these people who own suburban chickens versus these people who are constantly mowing their lawns with these gas lawn mowers, which is this huge, inv- I mean, I, I really am against lawn mowers for a lot of reasons, gas lawn mowers. One, lawns are just, they're terrible. They don't make sense. I did this, I did this YouTube short actually explaining why lawns don't make sense. And, uh, it was amazing to watch people not understand like grass and trees are different environments. Mm. And, you know, people thought would mansplain to me in the short, like being like, no, this is how it works. And it was like, no, it doesn't work. You never see grass. Grass doesn't grow in the forest. Trees doesn't grow in the, don't grow in the plains. Okay. Is, it's illogical. And so the numbers on the pollution for these gas things though, are, I mean, mind numbing. The, I forget if it's the EPA or a different government agency put out a thing saying um, gas lawn mowers and stuff ju- like same, same carcinogens as cigarettes mm-hmm. the, that they generate the main carcinogen from cigarettes, you know, in much higher amounts, the equivalent of you of using a gas leaf blower. The equivalent was like a study from a bunch of years ago. was like eight hours of driving a car, mm-hmm. which is, 
which is nuts because the, the leaf blowers have not gotten better in technology, but the cars have. So that kind of means that driving a, 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 driving a car for eight hours is better than using your leaf blower now. Hmm. You're, you're polluting less by driving a car for eight hours, which is wild. And so it's like, these are these two sides. These people are addicted to lawn mowing. If you've ever talked to someone who lives, I live in Cleveland, which is sort of suburban. But if you, if you talk to anybody in these areas where there's lawns and you talk to them about their lawns, they're, they're nuts about it. And so it's both sides of this insanity of, of environmental stuff. And that to me was like perfect for a trauma story, environmentalism, fixing stuff and in, in, in action. You know, what, what, what are either, what are any of us doing? Is, uh. is having the chicken taking action? Not really. It just adds a chicken to your house no. take away the chickens in the other place but again i get it does mowing your lawn make your house valued more not really but i guess it makes you feel good and uh, you'll get in trouble with the hoa if you don't mow it i guess hoas those, those fucking things should be shut down too Seriously. but 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 you get in trouble but you want to know why you get in trouble and this is another classic trauma theme hmm. for to keep races out of white neighborhoods you add a cost so that poor Jewish, black, Asian, Spanish people can't afford to move in. You continue yeah. to add a maintenance cost that someone who works more can't do. It's like a known uh, entity that you yeah, add. Yeah. And, you know, golf courses are a big part of grass. That's another way to be racist. And there's all this weird racist stuff connected to grass uh, uh, and lawns. <laughs> it's bizarre. Tennis, golf, these are all racist club institutions. You know, mm -hmm. you can look this stuff up. Uh, HOAs, totally racist. They're just, a, a, you know, another version of control. Mm -hmm. um, all prime for a trauma story. But this sounds very serious. It's a very funny game. Um, yeah. So we made, we made a, a, what we're calling like a AAA visual novel or a choose your own adventure game. And cool. it really goes through all these scenes and you get to explore. There are, I think, four paths you can take. Um, one that, uh, the fourth, I don't really, that's why I'm saying four. I don't really count it. There's a way to get pretty to the end of the game pretty quickly. Uh -huh. Um, so it's just about making like funny ass animation, funny ass scenes. A lot of the people involved are good improvisers, are good podcasters, are good writers. And it's, it's really about taking something like a visual novel, choose your own adventure detective sort of stuff, and really putting a ton of work into the voice a ton of work into the characters and story, which usually doesn't happen in a visual novel. Yeah, I was gonna say too, the artwork that I've seen is really unique too. It's a really cool style, lots of like bright color, kind of yeah, high contrast, really cool looking. We, I wanted so so the thing the 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 main way that like I really make my work stick out is by avoiding, uh, and I think you can appreciate this too, is like seeing where trends are going yeah but like honestly kind of avoiding that so that you because a lot of time as artists and it's really this way in especially uh, like music books and um movies um there's this idea that like well this doesn't sound like or look like or it seems like the conventional thing i know so you must not know what you're doing it's like no i'm trying to do something unique and it's like oh and that that takes a, a lot to to get past. I wonder have you have you experienced that in the world of like music and and just... yeah yeah I mean um, I think well I, I'm actually not even sure how to answer that. I mean I think we all kind of have to do our own thing and find our own path creatively. Yeah. You know whatever that is. Um, for me, I don't know. You might call this a gimmick, but it's just a way for me to kind of do what I do. You know. Well, yeah. Well, even, even, even this as like a quote unquote gimmick, it's like, do, do how many people who do this kind of stuff do it the way you do it? How many, you know, like, right. Yeah. Hopefully that sets me apart. I don't really know anyone else who does, but uh, so I we, <laughs> <laughs> we, we, I wanted it to be, it's, it's a lot inspired by like, um, late nineties, early two thousands comics sort of mixed with anime and mm -hmm. my own style. Uh, and I think it looks it looks really different. It looks really cool. It does, yeah. I, I don't know anything like it really. That's um, that's been my that's been on my website forever, which is like just making making art that's new. 
Like that's, yeah. that's, it sound and there's a whole spiel on there, but it's like, you know, that's not something that everybody does. Totally. Yeah. You, you read about like how to succeed in media. You'll read these books or, or even like online articles or, or take college classes. People will tell you all the time to copy and mimic and follow mm. trends. And it's like, you know, no. opening, I, credits, opening credits in, in, sh- in two minute short films. Do you know how many people put like opening credits into a two minute short film because they've seen Hollywood do it a lot. And guess what? Audiences do re- stupid audiences do respond to that. Stupid film curators do go, Oh, look, mm. you, know, it's like, you don't need an opening. There's not, sag rules about who goes first you can do whatever you want yeah whatever well works. so interestingly uh trauma is kind of like for those who don't know what trauma is like i kind of look at trauma as sort of the anti-hollywood uh very celebratory of independent art independent cinema um people kind of d- going the other way and doing their own thing in, in the way that they do it you know um so yeah, I'm kind of curious, like, how, because I, I, I don't know the backstory of, like, how did this game come about? Like, did you, do you, were you approached by Trauma? Did you come up with the idea and bring it to Trauma? Or, like, how did that happen? Um, I had pitched, I had gotten a, a film um, acquired by Trauma Now. Mm. And, um, to, but a few months before that, before I submitted, I kind of had this realization of like, oh, I didn't know Troma was accepting stuff still. I think about six or seven months before the film was, you know, accepted. And this was years ago at this point. I was kind of like, oh, I didn't know they were, I, I was learning about Troma now and all that different stuff. Didn't know they were accepting. It got accepted. I reached out to them and basically was like wanting to know really as a professional filmmaker, where, where were, you know, obviously I, I, kept abreast of what Lloyd was doing, but I I didn't, I didn't understand that it was still, there's a great period of expansion in Troma's history in the nineties where they're doing a huge amount of, of uh, smaller films, um, possibly, possibly to, in some, in some cases to the detriment of, um, you know, the studio itself. Mm -hmm. Uh, but there's a great period of expansion. They're bringing in a lot of small filmmakers. This is when some of the bigger names get involved and Lloyd is making movies, of course, but, there's all these smaller acquisitions and DVD sales and VHS sales and stuff like that. And so I had figured that they had slowed or stopped that entity. I didn't uh-huh. think that the bigger films were still not getting made, but it, there was all these filmmakers that were still making films that were being involved in Troma now and all that stuff. And I basically just tried to meet all of them. Uh-huh. I basically wrote to Troma and was like, what are these people doing? Who are they? And that kind of set me down the road of working with these people being in that circle for a while and then finally um gringo fantastico who does this yeah. really cool uh like horror show stream yeah. uh, he, he needed an intro and i said you know i've wanted to pitch this game for a while can i make you this animated version of trauma that i really wanted to make and he said yeah and so we did it and we did the whole intro that became the basis those elements became the basis of the town you see in the trauma presents poultry guys. That's awesome. Um, yeah. And then that wow. was it. So then it went forward and there was a lot of Matt McNew and other people and Joe Manko and, um, LSF films and, uh, just everybody involved in trying to get it going. And then eventually of course, taxidermy and building the whole team once it actually started to happen. Yeah. Wow. Um, I, I mean, I have to ask, why Poltergeist? Of all trauma films, why Poltergeist? It was suggested, is the one thing. I had suggested a more general pitch. Um, it, was, it, was, it was suggested that that would fit, um, yeah. that they would accept something like that. Um, it, it, it was already within chickens and environmental stuff. I really wanted to do an environmental film. And Toxie is really the big Toxic Avenger, and Nukem High is the big environmental series. Obviously, oh. I, I wouldn't have thought to do that. And Poltergeist is the other environmental thing. Um, I think we 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 talked about. I started a YouTube show talking about making the the game, and I said that you know we 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 went for the environmental side, but oh. I think there's I think there's a whole other Poltergeist to be made out of just 
like Uber drivers and Grubhub drivers and stuff. Like oh, that, that would be the fast food side of things right yeah. now. Those jobs are fucking brutal and yeah. they treat like shit. And it's very similar to, to the experience that the main character in the original has versus the environmental stuff, which is not the core basis of the, the plot. Mm-hmm. It's a core basis of the ideology of the film. Um, but I don't, I, it doesn't, the plot itself focuses more on po- political action towards these things, which I think is, is, a, you know, so we sort of flip things. We, we, mm-hmm. we move stuff up and down. We do have a fast food restaurant in the game. Um, but you're only, you're, it's a, it's sort of a, a, a brief moment, sort of a, a way station kind of area. Um, but I, I thought it was a great idea for oh. a fast food restaurant. It was the idea was that all of the the plates are 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 scales. All the plates and cups are like scales. And the idea was when you went to this restaurant, you could um, see how much people had eaten at their table to see whether how close you were to getting a table. Huh. That was my little sci-fi addition. But it's a background detail. Uh, to you could see how obese we all are and how much we eat. I can't, the fucking calories on stuff, like it just just bums you out. I'm going to eat it. (laughs) I've never never seen the calories and been like, no, you know? So it's just a bummer. Yeah. I feel like soda's the worst too. Cause like soda, you're just drinking liquid sugar in like a concentrated form. And then that somehow makes you more hungry and you eat more. Pretty fucking gross. (laughs) Yeah. 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 It, it, the, the calorie numbers on this on the soda are deeply depressing you know yeah. because it's like the, the the deal on soda is crazy yeah. <laughs> and it's just like one dollar but it's again it's just who cares who cares but uh yeah the the game also focuses a lot on like natural conversation mm-hmm. that was big, that was a big part of it too so like that i'm saying that because that conversation about like how you feel like shit seeing the calories that was the types of conversations that we had. And it was just like, how do we, how do we work that into a game? How does, how does that get added to, to, a, to a plot? Is that relevant, you know? Mm. How, uh, how big of a team did you have working on the game? Both big and small. Like animation, design, uh, editing, directing, um, game design, all that stuff. That's just me. Mm. Um, uh, but in terms of a visual novel, the cast size is massive. There's about 20 actors, some of which only have one or two lines, but the main cast is a a core of, of, of 12 people, um, which for a voice game is for a visual novel is huge. It's, it's a massive uh, uh, cast. And I think that that's what like really made it. Um, so, you know, normally in a visual novel, you have like a few characters that jump in and out. We really are like any little moment is voiced by stuff. Any little, I don't think, I think that only game instructions appear in, uh, only game instructions appear as like word only options versus like the majority of visual novels are basically done in RenPy and characters come in and say, 20 to, to 50 lines if they're the star and then that's it mm-hmm. uh, we had four hours of original audio before uh-huh. everything got cut down uh, it's pretty cool very cool um so i got well first of all were you a, were you a big gamer growing up yeah i so i was i was very into <laughs> i have I, I suffered from a few years from a Pokemon addiction when I was a kid. Oh, nice. Okay. And that game was so cool. The, the original Pokemon was so cool that, like, you could just get lost in it for hours. Mm. I don't think I'm particularly good at it or, like, you know, this isn't like the modern era when that game came out where it's like, you should know all about it and you can spend time online. Like, all you really could do is just sit there with the game in your hand. Yeah. And I, re- I played that for years and I had this sort of realization when I was – and I was always buying sort of retro games uh, along the way. Um, as in, like, I just never updated. <laughs> I, kept, I kept buying Game Boy and stuff. And then when I was at the end of high school, was like, I'm going to start to make a game collection 
and I started to get into just finding garage sales and, and doing that stuff. And at a certain point, someone was like, you know, do you like JRPGs? And I had realized, oh yeah, I do. Uh, but I would never say I did because I realized I basically had only played Pokemon. Um, so I, and I'm not even familiar. JRPG meaning like a Japanese RPG. Yeah. Yeah. So so it's this very it's an it's a genre that's not huge in America because we're not huge fans of reading. Right. Um, but uh, it sort of made me realize I needed to branch out that I basically only played Pokemon because I had sort of been only playing these games that I could collect, um, and then. Uh, the new Pokemons came out, which were sort of reboots of Game Boy versions that I didn't have because they were expensive. Okay. Um, you could get this Poke Walker. It's right there. I wish I, could, I wish I knew exactly where it was. It's in a drawer right there. That was like a Pokeball. And I thought that was so cool. And I got back into games and that delayed me more. Um, and, but meanwhile, I was playing Pokemon like crazy, learning animation. And it only occurred to me kind of recently that I could uh, do, do animation, yeah. you know, for games, make a game. and. Honestly, Unreal 4 was a big thing for me. Uh, not 5, which is the most recent version, which has like a lot of graphical fidelity jumps. Yeah. Seeing Unreal 4 and seeing uh, there's a version of coding that uses visual elements and sort of just um, using nodes, if you know anything about like computer programs and 3D programs. Um, and I was just like, oh, I can learn this stuff incrementally. And so that's that's where the whole thing came out of. So are you more are you self taught in that? Mm -hmm. Not in animation, but in games. Yeah, uh, okay. I went to I went to school for animation. Oh, cool. Uh, but I games was it was I took some classes that were more about like theory, more about mm -hmm. game history, not really about mechanics. Um, but yeah, like. It's all self-taught, you know, there's no, there's no version of, nobody goes back to school every time a new camera comes out. Sure. Yeah, nobody, yeah. None of the filmmakers who were working on digital went back to school when the 4Ks came out, right. when Red came out. Art is always about that. You yeah. know, it, the school is about getting a foundation. Yeah, yeah, I, I think the same way about music and software and all sorts of other stuff I need to use. You kind yeah. of, and I, I, I don't know if you feel this way, but I, I think that once you learn a certain set of skills, you can kind of learn what you need to know to like do the next thing. Is that kind of how you're doing it? Like learning as you go, as you need to learn something, you figure it out. One hundred percent. Yeah, 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 yeah. It, 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 and I've never, I've never run into a program. I've never run into, uh, uh, I should say, like a a program or like a program at a school that covered anything. That yeah. covered every uh, covered everything. Right, right. I would I would say that any formal training, people would be hard pressed to say that any art form we covered every single thing you can do. You know, even even very simple, quote unquote, compared to a computer. Like, there's no way that going to four years of Juilliard for the violin, which has four strings and what like eighteen notes on each string, they're yeah. not going to teach you everything you can do with a violin in four years. Only playing the violin. Right. Of course not. Right. I've never, I've never seen any program that involves art and and even rudimentary technology like a four stringed instrument, yeah. which is you when you start to add all those things up, it's complicated. No, nobody, nobody could teach that. And so it's like the big moment too. When it's a good example of this, when I went to school, it was the last year my school was going to offer film, like physical film, cellulite, cool. Cool. and. Yeah. You, it was the first year you were not required to take it. So, or second year, you were not required to take it. So I had no impetus to, to learn film. However, every teacher who had great resumes was, you know, having to learn digital, forced to at this point say, I cannot, I can no longer say I will edit celluloid. I can no longer say that because the school I work at says it's not valuable. They don't even care about it. And it's like, hmm. those people didn't lose their college uh, professorial, you know, status until they went back to school for digital film. Yeah. They learned it. Some of them were learning along with us. Some of our teachers, you know, I didn't really realize it when I was a freshman, were learning like a year ahead of us, basically. <laughs> you know? Wow. To, to, to do this just, to stay, just to stay ahead. 
just to stay relevant. Mm -hmm. Nobody can film anymore. I mean, film is still a really useful tool. I think it gets undersold, especially for like high quality cinematographers who have a huge budget. I think that the fact that it can always up res is a 35 millimeter film. It will be a very long time before we reach a resolution that cannot be like duplicated by a 35 millimeter film. Right. We're, we're not, we're not even really close. Um, I think that's so, the same. I mean, that's really the same with audio too. I mean, recording to analog, you, I mean, you just can't get the same quality as digital. Like any, any time you digitize something analog, you're turning an analog thing into ones and zeros. So you're going to yeah. lose a little bit of something. Well, I always, I always love this with analog too, where I go, where somebody will say, oh, it's a, it's an acoustic concert. And you know, I, I bought this acoustic concert. And I'm like, you didn't buy an acoustic concert. They go, yeah, I know I did. He played an acoustic set. They played, an, she played an acoustic set. Go, they recorded it. Yeah. Is, yeah. That's it. Someone else recorded yeah. it. Yeah. And, 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 you know, from what people tell me about, like, there's just no way yet to get a violin fully going back to the violin as if I know like so much <laughs> <laughs> the violin it's still useful however our 90% of, of of violin sounds capable of being you know digitized and playing a digital violin or absolutely but and and you would be a fool to say I'm only going to record to magnetic tape or <laughs> to to wax cylinder you just can't you, you would no. not get any any business so no. Yeah, it's 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 an interesting it's an interesting world we're in right now where there really is a um there's arguments on both sides, you know. Um, yeah. Um well so anyway, going back to how you learned, um what advice would you give someone who's trying to get into video game design and, and not sure if they should go to school or, or you know, sit down with, with Unreal and try to figure it out? I mean how Okay. What sort of advice would you give somebody in that so, situation? So, so, so there's like there's different questions there. Yeah, One, sorry. what what <laughs> what what advice would I give to somebody wanting to get into art? Um, mm. like you said, put your hands on something. Yeah. Don't don't go on the internet first. Don't 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 ask this question of a forum um, unless you're so shy that you really can't do it without that nudge. Mm -hmm. Go 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 the opposite route and look up what you want to do. You know, don't, don't ask people how, ask people like, well, what, what, what am I going to do next? And you'll figure out like your sort of like uh, motivation. Just be like, I want to make a, a movie. I want to make a game. Just go, go and try. Yeah, if, you, right. if you have any kind of technology at your disposal to do that, you have some way of starting. Um, it may be shittier over the years. I've learned that like, sometimes I will think someone has a really big skill. And then I'll learn like, oh, they just had a tool. They had a toy. They had a tool um, that makes their life so much easier. But just do it. Just make it. There's no, there's almost no excuse. Um, phones cost $20. You can get a camera phone yeah. at Best Buy for $20. Yeah. Free Wi-Fi somewhere. There's free editing programs. Even if they have watermarks, you know, try. Video games is a different question entirely. Yeah. So that's like sort of for art. There's an interesting thing going on with video games in terms of like, because I can't really speak to what a video game school would be like. I considered going. I still would not. I don't think it's invaluable. Like, I, yeah. you know, I don't think it's worthless. Um, but I can't yeah. speak. I, I mean, I, I guess from my perspective, because I know nothing about what goes into designing a video game. So to me, it sounds very kind of intimidating. Um, yeah. But I, I mean, I totally agree with what you're saying about making art. Like, just go out there and fucking do it, you know, and get started. There's, there's a weird thing right now with video games, and I'm coming, I'll come at it from the sense of like preserving art history, mm -hmm. where it's like um, the access to older technology is not cheaper. Like, if you want to make um, a movie that looks like a movie from 10 years ago, that is cheaper than making a movie now. If you want to make an amateur movie, like a consumer level movie from something that's 10 years ago, that is cheaper now. Um, that doesn't really exist with both collecting, playing, and designing games. Uh, it's, a very, okay. it's a very odd field right now. And there's not a ton of, there is a ton of effort towards it, but not a ton of progress in really solving 
is it realistic for a poor inner city kid to get the resources to make a game? Is that, are they actually having this, you know, okay, a kid wants to play, make, make um, the first Mario on the, on the NES, right? Yeah. Well, first of all, they have to do a crime right away. They're going to emulate it because they have to, because they're not going to spend $150 to get themselves an old TV with the hookups, an NES, an SNES, a controller, you know, yeah. whatever it is. They're not yeah. going to do that. So they have to do a crime to start and they need a computer to do it. And then they need the tech to build it, the time to do it. So it's this interesting, as opposed to other arts where if you get supplies in the hands, like painting, you can send a kid to a museum, for example. There are not a ton of resources that are legal for someone to see the classics for a video game. Interesting, um, that's true, yeah. They have loads of movies at libraries. But I've seen libraries and bought games from libraries that don't see it as relevant. Uh, yeah. they, just, they just sell them all. So it, it, it's a weird world to say, I can say that about movies. I don't know that I can say it about games. There are resources out there, but I don't, I don't know that. Uh, like, even if I were to say something like, you know, RPG Maker is having frequent free sales where you can just get RPG Maker for free. Uh, well, you still need a computer to do it. <laughs> yeah, and you might need a good one too, right? I mean, you might need a pretty high-powered computer to, depending on what you want to do. Or more importantly, right, like you want to make an RPG. I just talked to you and you were like, well, what's a JRPG, right? Mm -hmm. So it's like, what's an RPG? Okay, this is a free resource. Is that the game I want to make? What are other games like it? Are they all obscure Japanese titles that even if I had a Japanese Super Nintendo would cost me hundreds of dollars? Or do I go back to doing another crime of buying a pirated disc or a pirated cartridge? So it's a, it's a weird world. Yeah. Um, fortunately, uh, tons of Americans have computers. Yeah. Tons of Americans have iPads and iPhones and Android phones and things like that. So there, it exists. It's a little bit easier. I can't say it as much as I can say it with a movie or a comic book or a book. It's not, it's not so easy to do. Well, you know... That makes me think maybe it's a good thing in a sense that there's a little bit of a barrier for entry because, you know, I mean, if you think about how much crappy music is out there, how much, I, I hate to say like there's crappy art everywhere, but I mean, it is really easy to get a camera phone and put something out there into the world. Um, whereas if you're going to spend time, you know, really developing your skills to make a video game, hopefully by the time you do it, it's a pretty good one, you know? Yeah. And this is, this is, this is the big argument with like, I've, I've talked about this with podcasts and movies too, where it's just like, oh, well, we want to make YouTube available for everybody so they can upload stuff or StreamYard, which has a free version. We want to do this stuff. But that of course, isn't what thrives off of the free. What thrives off of the free is low. It's not someone who feels like I'm expressing myself. It's, you know, people being cheap. It's people being whatever. It's not, you know. It, it's not great. I mean, you look at TikTok. TikTok gives you this access to tons of audiences and things like that. The stuff on TikTok, I'm sort of mildly obsessed with like TikTok streams. Um, <laughs> they're, they're horrible. They're like the worst shit I've ever I, seen. I, you're, you're talking specifically about like the, um, what, do you, what is it called? Um, NPC streams and shit like that. Like I, well, well, NPC streams, at least there's something going on there. I'm not talking about... I don't anything. understand. I mean, I, I see a lot of shit on there that I don't understand. I don't understand why anybody would watch it. So there's like... So if you have an actual idea or a creative skill, don't think I'm talking about you. There right. are streams that exist on TikTok and YouTube. Yeah. And the, the, the computing power for streaming is, you know, crazy. And it's this thing that... that, that they just give access to so many people. And there are these streams where these people will sit there and I don't even really know. Like an NPC stream is funny. At least you're trying to go for some weird effect or mimery. Sure, uh, sure. Oh. A lot of them are stupid, but there's lots of stupid trends that involve skill. I mean, a lot of the dancing stuff is stupid. But this is a stream where the person just sits there. They have no topic. They're not a particularly interesting person they will respond occasionally to chats. It's very bizarre. A lot of times, sometimes it's like someone hot. And, you know, obviously the thing here is sort of baiting people into talking to them and, and then being hot. 
Uh-huh. Sometimes it's not. So there is this genre of which I, you know, everyone can make money, but it's like you talk about free art. What it what does it devolve into? It never uh-huh. devolves into something good. The uh-huh. majority of it is someone sitting there being like, "Yeah, I had a sandwich." I've seen worse than that, man. I've seen people. I've seen people just literally asleep on camera. You yeah. know, or sometimes you don't even know if they're asleep or if it's a photo. And then, but there's hundreds of people in the in the chat, and it's like, why, why, why are you wasting your time in here? You are describing my exact obsession with it. Yeah. It is. It is. It, there's a documentary waiting to be made. In that, you know, yeah. what? Why is that going on? It's so weird. It is. It's so weird. And so that's the problem when you say, oh, free art and all these things and all these, like you're saying, we sound, we sound like we're being elitist because we have mics and we have technology to do these things. But like, it's not the case. A lot of it is shit. Yeah. It's frustrating, you know, as an artist, as, you know, as someone like yourself, I mean, we've dedicated our lives to doing art and like crafting, uh, you know, honing in on our skills and, and, to see that shit and to see people successful at that is what's really frustrating because you're like what i'm out here putting out cool stuff and you're over there doing this shit like what the hell yeah it's never it's never the idea of oh you know there's there's this podcast or there's this musician and they're they're very funny or they're very good but their their stuff is low quality and i don't i don't want to watch low quality you know I, i i need the i need the 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 mp3 to be compressed you know almost uncompressed i need it to be i can't listen to that i need the instruments to be top of the line it's never that no. it's never it's, that's never the problem it's never like you're getting exposed to people who are pretty good musicians but they don't have a lot of money you're getting exposed to idiots who yeah. also don't have the good tech they also are grainy yeah. you know it's it's not like a trade it's not like this trade off of like oh i really can only be bothered with hollywood films for example you know it's 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 just morons float to the top and then they pretend they did a lot yeah you know it's it's really weird to me it's really yeah. weird so maybe it's a good thing that there's no shitty games maybe there's no, no you can't you can't uh, it, in the end I've, I've gone through this a lot of times with with podcasters and just unfunny comedians and things like that no a world where there's free art and you have to go above the noise is, is still better than one mm. where it's so elite that you can't get in right you're not allowed to express yourself. Uh, I, that's what I choose. In the end, I've gone through this in my head. I could go back tomorrow and be like, you know, fuck anyone that makes a shitty podcast. <laughs> I mean, it's really easy to be jaded when you see that shit. And uh, I, don't, I mean, again, yeah, I don't understand it, but, um, but I, I appreciate that there's people like you out there doing your thing and, you know, caring about what you do. Hopefully uh people will go check out the game that's a pretty fun game especially if you're a fan of like visual novels and things like that i think it's a cool game absolutely so you you just told me it's out it's on uh xbox is it anywhere else yes it is currently on xbox and epic epic is where we're sending pc people so the epic game is like where you get fortnite and xbox xbox consoles okay sweet switch is murky um, and iPhone is murky and Mac is probably definitely coming, but, uh, um, awesome. I, iPhone, we did some tests and I don't, I don't know. Uh, I, iPhone may not happen, but, and uh-huh. switch is switch. We're, we're trying, but Xbox right now and Epic, if you're on PC. Fuck yeah. I'll, I'm looking forward to that, man. I didn't realize I could, I don't have an Xbox. So I was kind of bummed out. I was like, shit, I guess I can't play. Oh yeah. This. Epic, Epic, Epic. Cool. I'll definitely be checking that out. Um, well, right on, man. Um, I guess before we before we wrap up, um, anything else you want to drop as far as like maybe where people can find you, uh, how to track down the game. I guess you just told us that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you go, if, if you if you search Poultry Guys game, you gotta know how to spell Poultry Guys. It's poultry like chicken, geist like ghost. Um, if you search that on Newgrounds. You can find you can find um, all my links there, like my social medias and all that different stuff, and all the places to get it. Uh, I like I like new grounds. Uh, <laughs> I like new grounds because another thing that has come up is pop ups in the world. I don't understand how pop ups have come back. Uh, mm. As somebody 
who grew up getting the internet, you know, when I got the internet, the idea that pop-ups are back as something websites want to show you is, uh, it's dystopian to me. Yeah, that's super Uh, weird. I didn't even realize that. It's, you know, you go on email list. Is, uh, okay, I'm on your website. I'm going to be as updated as I can be. Right. <laughs> I'm here. I'm updated. I'm at the, the core. <laughs> There's no more update than me right now. I'm on the website, you know? I, it would And it's, it would make more sense if you went on a website and you got an email list for a site you're not on. Right. Wouldn't that make, wouldn't that make sense to make money? Is to go, you go to, to like big floppy dicks.com and they're like, do you want to join the big floppy balls list? Oh, yeah. <laughs> because you, you're here. Do you want, yeah. you want, but you're, you're like, you're going to check up on big floppy dicks. Cause that's your thing. You're coming back here. You're, you're checking our social medias, but you might not have the time for big floppy balls. They so probably it, do that, man. They all, our, our information is being sold all over the place. To what end, so, though? To what, uh, this is my question. Okay, you want my information. What is everyone interested in? Porn and eating. Okay. Does that help you? Great. What do you need our info for? It's weird. I have, a, I have a whole problem with this info stuff. It's just like, what are you marketing to? What does it matter? You know? Dude, it gets crazier than that. I mean, they're, they're, I don't know if I should even get into it, but I mean, they're, they're like tracking your behaviors, like, they know that when Jacking you're off and eating. Sorry, not, I can solve that for them too. Not only that, I mean, if you're somebody that like goes on vacation when you're stressed out or something, you know, they'll they'll market to you or they'll they'll advertise to you vacation packages because they know you had a rough week because they could see what you're doing. I don't know. It, I'm sounding like I'm going down a conspiracy route. Oh no, it's fucking true. Yeah, they do that shit. No, I don't. I don't not think it's true. I don't not think it's creepy. I think why like what are you what are you gleaning from this info i have this sketch that i want to do that i've talked about with people for a while where this marketing person comes in and he's like well you know he says some of this stuff that you're saying and he's like pointing at this chart and he's like you can see 27 you know 2700 people came here and did this he's walking through it and then someone's like well what what's like off screen it's like an off screen gag it's like well what's that line over there and he like turns around and it's this like big thing it's like oh that's people jacking off And like, well, that data seems sure. really relevant. Like, it's way bigger than all the other bars on the smart graph. And they're like, no, 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 no. Look at here. Here's all the people who will buy hamburgers with pickles on it. It's like, well, wait, that's if that's what they're doing. Yeah, you know, yeah. What are they? What are they jacking off to? What's going on? Why don't there? we do? Why don't we do to cater to that audience? No, 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 no. People will tie their shoes loop de loop if they want to buy an Adidas. It's like, whoa, like, don't. It seems like they just like boobs and cocks. Yeah. It seems like that's their big thing. I don't know. So I don't know either, man. I'm not. I'm not well educated. I'm not well educated enough for have the the vocabulary either. to explain what the hell's going on with that shit. Yeah. But I I do believe that it's going on behind the scenes, and it's pretty fucking hundred hundred pretty crazy. Hundred percent. It's like you know, you ever have a conversation, and then you look at your phone, and it's like an ad for the shit you were just talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's creepy. I I, I oh, I sound like I'm being so logical towards it i don't like it it makes me paranoid as someone with ocd it's something that i just don't like uh it's weird i one time had like a meltdown because i had this pitch this was like seven years ago and i was sending it to somebody and you know when you have a pitch for something you really don't want people to see it because people do just steal ideas um and so it's easy for somebody with huge exposure to uh take it and kind of even if they do a shitty version of it, they're first to publish. And I had this whole paranoid mm-hmm. thing that I accidentally messaged it through Facebook. And I had this whole meltdown of like, someone could see it. They could be tapping the data. They could be looking at it. And then they telling other YouTubers or filmmakers to do this thing. Cause that's what people are talking about. Cause they just see it as data. So I've mm-hmm. totally been there. And that was a full, I don't want anyone to think I'm so logical and the king of my brain. No, I've had that I've, thought I've too. I've totally done that. Yeah, I've had that thought too when I've shared stuff. Like, oh shit, was that, was that safe? Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, you, you feel it even when you send it to someone who you trust. Yeah. So when you're on these formats that are like, admit, I mean, it's in their terms of service. You can go look at, look at any social media thing. Oh, uh, yeah, they own it. That's right. They not only own it, you don't have anything as private messages. Private messages are private to your feed. Go read any social media you're on. It is there in plain English. 
that says we are allowed to monitor and search your messages. You do not have encrypted email on any of them. Any uh, of them. They just say it. They say it in plain English. Yeah. You know? I think what's, what's up? I think that's the only one that I know of. Oh, oh no, all of them. Go go look any any social media app that you have. Go into the terms of service. Look up like control F messaging, control F private messages. At some point you'll see something that, you know, or privacy. It says, yeah, we're looking at your messages. We totally have the right to, you know. Uh, uh, I'm scared now. Yeah. Oh, you, sh- you should be. And guess what? Just like the story of the Poultry Guys game, we are not doing anything about it. Yeah. It's great. I, I don't know what I can do, but it's great. Yeah, we're not, we're not, we're not going to give up the convenience of having these platforms. So. The convenience of seeing someone kind of half naked that we, that we knew a long time ago. I'm yeah. not, not anytime soon. Not anytime time soon. Not not no. no no sir. I'm a I'm a, I'm a God fearing American. I want to see <laughs> pictures of your children, you half naked, and things you've eaten. Why would I give up being spied on to give up those freedoms? <laughs> it's the worst. Oh. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty bad. Well, shit. On that note, uh, what's uh what's next for you guys or for for you or for this team do you have other ideas for video games going forward yes none that uh are worth are worth saying now because That's cool. it'll, sound, yeah. it'll, sound, it'll sound like hot air yeah 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 uh but yeah but you're working on shit that's awesome yeah the plan is to promote and then go into the next thing and and kind of video game audiences are kind of cool they kind yeah. of understand more stuff and it's where I want to put my funny ideas. It's where I want to put my interesting ideas. Uh, you look at the plots of video games, they are far beyond what we do in movies mm. and uh, TV and radio and stuff. So complicated. I mean, yeah, and I mean, the fact that you have multiple things, like multiple paths you can go down, I mean, you can create your own story within a universe. It's pretty cool. Take, take even, even, even like, you know, these tentpole games like Halo or uh, Call of Duty, you know, or any of these types of games that, that just, or even Fortnite, that are not necessarily, I don't think a lot of people see those as deep. Their stories are deeper than, um, I guess a better example, wait, I'll scratch that. A better example is like, take Star Wars, a, a movie that takes all these chances, that does all this weird stuff, right? Mm-hmm. They, they don't need to worry about what they put in it. And yet the games of Star Wars are deeply nerdy and deeply sci-fi and are deep in on mechanics and they're not afraid to do that stuff. I mean, that's, that's, that's crazy faith in the video game, uh, audience. Yeah. yeah. Um, you just brought up another question I have. So, uh, did you, are there, are, for fans of trauma, are there a lot of like Easter eggs and things like that we can look out for in the Lloyd, game? Lloyd is, Lloyd is a voice. You can catch Lloyd as a voice. Nice. Um, there are some little, little things, but really, really, we, we didn't want to do yeah. a ton of fan service. Cool. We, wanted to try, we wanted to try to make something totally unique. Yeah. Uh, we, we, those things are out there, um, you know, but, but the other thing I will say for fans of Troma is in the making of the game and the promotion of the game, um, we are... Uh, sort of having a poultry geist the original movie kind of reunion oh, where cool. i've been interviewing people who made the making of documentary people who starred in it and i've just sort of started collecting these interviews but we'll be putting those up to kind of promote the game of all these people that were sort of key players in, in the, the the movie we have interviews with awesome. uh, three people so far including uh the star um the creator of the behind the scenes and uh one of the co-stars so Pretty, pretty, pretty cool stuff for Troma. Oh yeah, Hell I yeah. think Troma fans will like it a lot. Um, is there a lot of blood and gore and all of that, or there's a little, there's a little, little. There's, a, there's a little bit of blood and gore. There's a little bit of blood and gore. I don't think you can match Poultry Geist. Uh, no way. That that's like the most bloody diarrhea film. Birds of blood <laughs> going everywhere. Yeah. Uh, uh, so uh, we, we certainly didn't want to try to ape Lloyd. Right. That was not our goal to make a movie or a game that was like, we're doing what Lloyd does. So we really went down our own path in that way. Cool. Yeah, no, it's cool. It's, it, so kind of a departure, but it's like inspired by. 
Yeah, I mean, it, 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 fits, it fits in the in the universe. It, it 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 totally does. It's just a different side of it. There's lots of fantasy. There's lots of sci-fi. There's lots of political unrest. There's lots of hating the government. There's lots of feeling oppressed. It's 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 all the tent poles of the movie, uh, mm. smushed into a game. Oh yeah. Well, awesome, dude. I'm gonna wrap this up, but uh, yeah. one more time. So you guys I didn't want to be the guy. I hate when you're on a show and someone's like, "I have to go. I got two minutes." But like, oh, no worries, man. <laughs> let's get, let's get the fuck out of here. What do, you, what do you do? You just have to. Be, you just have to be like, uh, 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 my house is on fire. <laughs> so let me just do plugs while my house. Yeah, that's cool, man. I was gonna, I was gonna wrap it up earlier, but uh, we got into some cool stuff, so I, I yeah, kept yeah. it rolling. No, no worries. I wish I could stay all day. I'll have yeah. to come back. Yeah, absolutely, man. I'd love to have you back here. Well, uh, thanks uh, one more time. Uh, Xbox, Epic Games. Uh, I don't know if you want to shout out your personal. Uh... Just go, just go to, just go to poultrygeistgame.newgrounds.com, and you can find you can find everything there. Awesome. Any any links, any short films we've done, any bonus stuff, any YouTube stuff. Awesome, and I'll have that link in the description. You guys can click on okay. that. Uh, all right. Well, thanks so much, and uh, we'll see you guys next time. All right. Peace. Peace.